Hi, I'm Jake from Carbus, and I'm standing here in front of the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback. We've already seen the sedan, now we have the hatch here. We also have the SI and the R still to come. There are two powertrains for this one. Two liter non-turbocharged four, making 158 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque. And a 1.5 liter turbocharged four, making 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. You can get it with a CVT or a manual, though the manual is only available on the Sport, Touring and the Sport. Okay, so we're standing here with Dan Calhoun, the senior product planner for the Civic lineup in front of the new Civic hatchback. Now there are some, uh, a few changes with the hatchback compared to the sedan, so Dan's gonna take us through some of them, starting with the front. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, overall the front, you're gonna see a lot of family resemblance to the, to the uh, sedan. Uh, basically the key difference is, is the grill and the way the hood slopes down. So on the, on the sedan, the hood slopes down a little bit further, this one's a little bit flatter, and you'll notice the grill on the, on the hatchback, we actually have the honeycomb which mm -hmm. kind of uh, mirrors the honeycomb design in the interior that's been very well received. Yes, yes, we do love that simple honeycomb design in the interior, which we will also check out. Okay, now you said, you told us from the uh, the front three quarters, besides that are mostly the same, mostly for the, the same, between yeah. the sedan and the hatchback. All right, let's move to the back and we'll check out some of the other changes. Okay, so now we're standing here at the back of the Civic hatchback and there's a couple more changes. So bring us through them, please, Dan. Yeah, the key difference between the sedan and the hatchback is this area back here. So it's pretty consistent for the front three quarters, but as you get to here, this is where you see really see the hatch, you know, design mm -hmm. come through. And it's really was Euro Euro inspired. And the whole idea was to give it a coupe like silhouette. And it really is, even though it's a hatchback, we really cut it almost like a fastback type design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were able to achieve that because we have a, a new tailgate that's made out of resin, so it's about twenty percent lighter than the current. So what we we're able to do is remove the hinges out. So the great thing about it is moving those hinges out allowed us to give that really nice slope to the back. So mm -hmm. it's ready to go hatch. And the great thing about that is it's it's even easier in open, to, open and close. But it did allow us to create that really nice sleek design. And we did it without having to sacrifice any headroom, which yeah. is really important. So I sat back there at 5'10", and I had uh, plenty of room with a couple inches still above my head. So I don't know how tall you'd have to be to be annoyed back there, but it yeah, was it, not me. It worked out really well the way we were able to do that to create that slope. Uh, even though it looks like it's a lot like more slanted than the mm -hmm. current car because the current car is a little bit a little bit more upright mm -hmm. you still have the same headroom which is great which really gives us this really cool design okay so how much cargo space is in the back of the civic here yeah, what's great about this being a hatchback is the cargo area compared to a sedan so uh, with the rear seats up this has 24.5 cubic feet of cargo space which is best in class mm -hmm. so it's very cavernous i mean it's really a, a big open space to put mountain bikes, other kind of things that you take for your activities. So really, really great and really versatile. And we folded it down earlier and there's, with the folded down, there's big screen TV space back there. I mean, plenty of space. Yeah, and the beauty also, we actually increased the rear opening at the bottom about 1.4 inches. So easier so, to load so and easier unload. easier to load and unload. And it's actually got a low load height too. So it's very easy, you're not gonna scratch your bumper. It's very easy to put things in and out. So right. another game, paying those attention to details. Being a hatchback, making it very versatile, as well as really stylish and, and very sporty. That's right. One more thing I want to talk about. We talked about the hatchback. It's uh, it's a very good entry point into the Civic lineup or the brand as a whole, or both. It's it's both actually yeah. the both the Civic sedan and the hatchback. Uh, we are pretty much 25% of our buyers are first time buyers. Yeah. First time new car buyers. Okay. Yeah. But we get very very young buyers with. Uh, probably about 45% under the age of 35. Mm -hmm. So we got the youngest buyers in, in the overall audience. We get, um, like I said, the first time buyers are huge. Um, we get a lot of multicultural. So very good entry to the brand for, Civic, for Honda. And did I also read that, is it 50% is conquest sales? A lot of conquest sales with pretty the Civic, right? 50% is conquest, yes. Yeah, that's super uh, impressive. And then, but the beauty, of the beauty is those that come out of a Civic and stay within the category buy another Civic. So if you're mm -hmm. gonna, have a Civic and you can buy another compact car, we get about 80% of those people coming back. So really, really high loyalty rate. All right, so now we're at the back back of the car and there's even more new features back here. Yeah, so again, uh, relative to the sedan, you know, we talked about the, the side view where you get more of that kind of coupe-like kind of look, that very hatch, uh, I mean, very, very fast back design. Mm -hmm. When you move to the back, you get a different light treatment or a different brake light treatment. So the lights are a little bit different. And we also have this brake light that extends across, which really helps the car make it look wider mm -hmm. and lower the ground and more planted. And it's a really cool touch too when you hit the brakes that this lights up. So it's a really, versus having a high mounted stop lamp. Yeah. This is really well integrated and really cool. And then when you move to the bottom, this is the Sport Touring. We also have the dual exhaust outlets, as well as a diffuser across mm -hmm. here, which we don't have on the on the sedan. So again, it adds to the sportier overall look. Gives, again, lower, makes it look lower and wider, mm -hmm. even though it's the same height and the same width as the sedan. Yeah. Having these extra touches 
gives it that little bit extra sporty look. Well, and I was following one of these behind, and I know it's like new, so you kind of don't recognize the whole thing. But I was looking, I was like, man, that looks that looks great, and like I would not recognize it certainly until you get up close enough to see that it's a Civic. Right. Yeah. It's it's really we're really excited about it. Um, again, both four door and the uh, and the hatchback. So. Yes, very nice. Okay, let's uh, take a look on the inside. All right, so now we're on the inside of the 2022 Honda Civic hatchback, looking at some of the cool new features. Obviously, the biggest standout is this honeycomb grill. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, first off, the whole interior, I mean, when you really look at it, it's very simple. It's very clean. Mm -hmm. I and mean, one of the whole thing is, is be very uncluttered. We like to call it noiseless. So mm -hmm. basically noiseless, it's like something that really doesn't distract from the overall design. And so, you again, you'll see very, very clean. And one of the, the cool pieces here was this, this honeycomb design that they actually put in. And, and it's very functional, but also very, very uh, designed, very, very stylish. And what it does, it really, it hides the, the AC vents. Yeah. So they yeah, don't yeah. interrupt the eyes. So again, it's not creating any kind of undue necessary like design elements. You can see across here, very clean, even through here, um, very kind of have that flat surface. And, it, yep. and it's also a very, um, it doesn't reflect. So you right. paid a lot of attention to detail to make sure. Well, and Civic's know, always been good with, uh, you know, the view out of the front. So right. there's kind of a low, flat um, right. uh, dash here. But so, yeah, so the in these knobs, you can control the vents down yes. here in any direction you want, but you really can't see what they're doing back there. Correct. Yes. Yes. And then what's the also next piece is when you start looking at your HVAC controls. And it's mm -hmm. really, you know, you see the, the, the lights behind it. They've all, even from the, and the uh, on the LX, they have the... The nice material here. Yeah, the, the metal. Nice yeah, metal material. And and when, I don't know if you can hear it, but yes, we do love really the, the tactile the click. Tactile it is so good. And you guys, I mean, we talk to a lot of designers, and you spend time on that stuff. Like guys yes. listen, like no nope, different. Yeah. We need a different click. No different click. But so you can set it on this, and yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's really a very cool. nice click. And yeah, tactile feel. It even feels mm -hmm. right. You know, it has the right amount, so it's not loose, so it feels really good. And right. actually, one of the inspirations they looked at was high end appliances. So you need know, you the yeah. really high-end appliance, but has that really kind of cool design. So those are the kind of things that they looked at in order to, to put this together. So a really, really cool touch. And then, and of course, we moved the screen up, so the screen's up higher than, than it used to be. And some people mm -hmm. say, oh, why isn't the screen down in here? But this is really a safety item because it really brings it up so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. And one of the yeah. whole ideas is to make sure when you're driving, very little eye, you know, head movements, very easy to see while you're driving. We do have a volume button, and these are very nice tactile buttons that you can push so they're actually buttons here it's not just uh like yeah. a touch screen knob right knob for yeah. the volume great you get yes. the buttons for the uh tuning and i do sometimes complain when the um screens aren't integrated but as long as it's below the dash line you know below right. the dash it doesn't block any of the dash it's it's fine and like you said the head movement is much less when it's here as opposed to yeah. when it's down yeah. there so the whole idea is keeping open that visibility open up and again we didn't touch it on earlier but kind of like in the sedan we pulled the eight pillars back Mm -hmm. you know about two inches and what that does and then putting the mirrors down here really again opens up that that vision and, and a lot of that is you know i look at it from we talk about safety but it's also kind of a confidence that you when you're driving it's a lot more you feel a lot more confident because you can see really really mm -hmm. well because you know there's a lot of blind spots you don't really notice it till you really start getting in a car and driving and this really opens up the expansive view which is what we're really really looking for here um as far as then some of the, the interior design we kind of went a little bit off off keel there's a you notice we do have here the Bose, so mm -hmm. we do have the uh, premium Bose audio system in this because the the uh, this is the upgraded this is the upgraded is, stereo system yes with the twelve speakers yep. and the center points so sounds awesome sounds I was awesome. I was bumping it earlier today yeah really sounds awesome this piece here is really nice um, and this is standard across all the trims and it's that. Um, it, 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 it reduces any kind of fingerprints or smudges. Yeah. And it doesn't scratch easy. And it's a, so it's a really a nice, nice touch. This is, a, a, second to this, this, I really like this piece here. I, I agree. And it, and it's not that it's, um it's not matte or flat either. It's no. got a little bit of gloss to it, but with the texture, yeah. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't yeah. leave fingerprints, which is super cool. Yeah. And then we also shifted, um, we moved the cup holders so they're not directly behind, so you're mm. not, and, and we even tilted the shift knob about five degrees. Mm. Just, Towards so the driver. So yeah. when you drive with one hand, you have your hand on the shifter, it feels more natural. So mm -hmm. again, those are the kind of details we pay attention to, um, which make a difference, you know, when you really take the, the thing in as a whole and really start experiencing it, really, it has a nice touch to it. But it's a nice here because if you're here and you go to do your controls, you're not gonna hit your coffee in the morning, which right. when you got it set up differently, <laughs> that can happen. So that's a nice touch. We also here, you don't know, notice that we have a, uh, a drive mode, so we have a sport mode. Yeah, new sport mode new for sport 2022, mode. right? Just for this year? Only on the sport and the sport touring. So gotcha. yes, it's the first yep. time we've had it. Of course, it won't be on the manual transmission, mm -hmm. but the sport mode's really a nice um, added benefit to the car. You can just put it in there and it takes it, it keeps it around 2000 RPM. You know, the CPT, even, even yeah. at cruising speed when you when you have it in the sport mode. So, and then you notice here, 
Um, again, we have the two two USB ports. We do have yep. again. This is since this is sport uh, touring. It does have the wireless right. The wireless charging, charger. wireless Apple CarPlay as well. Yes, wireless um, CarPlay and Android. The screen is the nine inch mm-hmm. screen on the base cars, or I should say the LX Sport and um, the XL is seven inch screen. And then you notice on the um, the um, MID, we do have the ten point two inch full digital dash. Whereas on the others, it's digital on the left, and then it's got the um, analog on the right that's although, right. It, although it looks fully digital when you when we you turn it on you yeah. turn it on but it isn't you have to look twice but this yeah. one's the full digital dash which is really cool um and you know it's a little car in the middle where it when you push on the brake the lights will come on on the, on the car there. oh yep so or if you put on your blinkers it turns on yep that's, and that's cool a, and that's also show you um <laughs> your lanes your lanes yeah. when you're doing your lane keep assist mm-hmm. or when you're doing your cruise it'll also show other cars so it'll show a motorcycle or a yep. truck so it shows icons so it's a really cool feature when you're when you're when you're driving the car um and you know again we were speaking about features we were talking earlier about how uh all these cool features have just kind of uh dropped down to the lower you know to the um, less expensive cars, right. including adaptive cruise control and yes. lane keeping and yes. basically lane following and lane centering, all that stuff. Yes. Yes. Got to keep your hands on the wheel still, yes. obviously, but it is a semi-autonomous system, assisted driving system, yes. yep. um, you know, navigation, yes. all that stuff. And like we said, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, yes. everything you need. And this is the, this is one of the most expensive or the most this expensive? This is the top of the line. This is the Spark Touring and it starts at 29400 all right, so under thirty thousand yeah. dollars for the most expensive well, one. Well, and, and it's the same price as the outgoing model. So if you look at our sport and our sport touring, the exact same price as the tenth gen. So we've added all this okay, brand, a brand new car, new features that we didn't have on the on the previous generations because mm-hmm. we've added you know on this car we do have the Bose premium audio system. We have the blind spot that we've added. We've added um, you know rear airbags in the back, uh, rear side airbags. We've added two knee airbags. Um, we've added like um, traffic jam assist. Mm-hmm. So there's things on here, even like the wireless charging um, and the wireless CarPlay. So a lot of new features by keeping the price the same as the outgoing model for the Sport Touring. All right, so there's a quick look at the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback. It's on sale now. It's a top safety pick plus, and they expect five stars from the upcoming crash testing. Uh, we think it's a little cooler looking than the Civic Sedan, but we're really waiting for the SI and the R to come. We are in the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback. This is the Sport Touring model. You get a choice of a two liter non-turbocharged four making 158 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque, or a 1.5 liter turbocharged in the sportier models making 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. Uh, Six-speed manual is available, standard. Uh, you can get it with either engine on the Sport or Sport Touring, and this has a CVT, um, which does come with a Sport mode. Uh, the Sport Touring model is one of the most expensive, I think the most expensive, at about $29,000. Uh, same price as last year, and some of the Honda people noted it has a few extra features. So, we're out here on lovely Huron River Drive uh, near Ann Arbor, Michigan, on this nice, smooth, curvy road. And uh, we'll start with some of the interior features and technologies. Um, the seats are new for, I think, for 2022. They have a different uh, style of springs in them or something like that which makes them extra extra comfortable they are a little bit wide uh for my narrow frame but they're definitely comfortable when we were uh, in the turns earlier they felt a little slippery also we had stuff sitting on this seat and it was sliding all over the place because this does have the leather interior <clears throat> obviously that'd be uh, less expensive interior on the lower trims we also like all the non fingerprint catching material here uh, on the center console and on the doors um, it's got a little gloss to it but it also has a texture um, so it doesn't shine super bright when the sun's on it and it won't catch fingerprints which is uh, another bonus um, obviously we've seen uh, the interior with the honeycomb and stuff we love all of that the best part about this interior though is the knobs for everything there's a knob for volume up here on the screen there's knobs for climate and knobs for fan speed and they're not just knobs but they're nice loud clicky knobs um, with uh, metal accents on the sport touring model i don't know if you can hear that nice good tactile clicks which is always nice and like i said volume knob you need stuff that you can't that you don't need to look at while you're driving is the main key here and that's why they also put the screen up here on the dash so it'll be easier to see and like i said i like them usually integrated into the dash but i get how this is better uh, up closer to the eye line and also it doesn't block anything um, it's not above the windshield line here so that's good 
So we drove the stick shift earlier. Uh, all the cars we drove today were the 1.5 liter turbocharged with the 180 horsepower. Uh, love the stick shift version of the car, six speed obviously. Super easy clutch um, with the catch point you know, right in the middle uh, and super easy and short throws on the shifter too. Now if I was gonna teach someone how to drive stick shift, this would be very high on my list to go to because it's very, very, very easy. Uh, catch point is big enough where you don't have to be too sensitive in that little point right there. I think that's more fun to drive than the CVT, but we do appreciate that they put a sport mode now in the CVT. And you know, 180 horsepower is still 180 horsepower. And when they tune a CVT for sportiness, like you can with a separate mode, you know, it's pretty good at keeping the car right in the power band. So you can kind of, you know, zip around without um, having to worry about shifting and only thinking about steering and braking. The brakes, by the way, exceptional. Um, any stiffer than this, and I think it would be too stiff for a uh, non-enthusiast car, for a, for a normal person's car, as they say, um, but it's got a short little throw in the brake pedal to make it, it stop. The brake pedal and gas pedal are also close together, which is nice for heel-toe downshifting on the manual cars. So I would say the steering on the uh, Honda Civic sedan and hatchback is are both better than average, but you know, Honda's always been kind of above average in you know, steering sensitivity, feel, ratio, all of that. You know, I just drove the GTI, and I think that might be a little bit better, but uh, the GTI is tuned a little bit tighter as well, and also has a little bit better tires. Uh, right now we're on uh, some Continentals, 18-inch, uh, and um, they feel great in this car. We were zipping around some very uh, curvy roads earlier, and it's fun to push it, especially with that manual transmission. It's still fun here. Um, but just not as fun as with the manual transmission. Uh, on the safety side, you know, it comes with all of Honda's uh, Safety Sense stuff. Um, and this one has the full uh, adaptive cruise and uh, lane keeping, lane centering and all that. And so we're gonna turn it on now on this curvy road because it was pretty impressive earlier. Maybe a little bit too aggressive as in, uh, you know, it kind of grabbed me once in a while and when I wasn't even on top of the lane yet, but um, and when the lanes got uh, broken and when the road got broken, it got a little uh, glitchy a little bit too. But the fact that it can even, even thinks it can grab this curvy forest road and drive on it uh, with, without me putting input in is uh, pretty impressive. Um, so it kind of shows up in your gauge cluster here. You see the two lanes, you see other cars in there. And when they turn green and the steering wheel turns green, that means it's in the, you know traffic jam assist mode or self-sist or traffic assist mode, whatever they call it and then you kind of just keep your hands rested on the wheel. Um, this is one of the, uh, like we said, torque-based systems. Um, most of them are this way. Uh, the Rivian pickup, EV pickup we just drove was a capacitive touch, so all you had to do was kind of have some fingertips on the wheel to let it know that you're still there. Um, this one you kind of have to give it a little jiggle once in a while, which is fine. I think the main point is that these days, there aren't that many options for compact sedans with a little bit of sport in them. The Jetta is obviously one of them, or the Golf probably if you're going hatchback. Um, this Civic, you know, the Mazda 3 is not very fast, but although the turbo is fast, but it handles great. So if you want something that's a good handler and uh, kind of sporty like this, the Jetta or the Golf and the Mazda 3, you know, the Nissan, let's see, the Sentra, I believe would be the uh, alternate here, or maybe the Altima, probably the Altima. Uh, looks a little bit cooler, looks a little bit wilder, I guess. I don't know if it looks cooler or not. The Civic is definitely toned down from the previous years. At any rate, if you're looking at compact sedans, you're going to want something a little bit sporty. This is one, two, or three option-wise, I would say. So check it out. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jake for CarBuzz.